Right. We are live. We're going to look at this machine right here, the new Recoma MT1502 or 2000 and whatever they call it, but it's got the new Android tablet on it. I think it's the, I forgot what it's called, guys, to be honest, but I'm going to wait till a few people join in before I turn this thing on. And I want you guys to tell me what buttons to press and um, exactly uh I'm going to navigate through this touch screen right here just to help you guys make a better decision on whether or not it's the right machine for your business. Let me wait for a few people to join in. Okay, I have a few people. I got six people watching. Um, if you are watching in the chat, what's going on, uh, T-Town T-Shirts? Thank you so much for joining in, everybody, as you guys are coming in. Hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But like I said, we're going to turn on this machine. I wanted a few of you guys to come in first. We're going to turn on the machine. I want you guys to see the animation when it turns on. And I want to press a few buttons and dive into it and show you guys exactly what's inside and what it does. And I want you guys to tell me what buttons you want me to press. OK, so just let me know. Happy Wednesday, guys. Happy Wednesday. Val, what's going on? Ink City Co., what's going on? Um, the Perfect Stitch by Lorene. Uh, Gerard, what's going on? Uh, Marissa Dandridge, what's going on? T-Town T-shirts, of course. All right, guys, just let me know when you want me to turn it on. Let me know what you want to do. I'm, I'm at your mercy right now. You guys are going to let me know what you want me to do. Actually, you know what? I didn't even put my phone on silent. I mean, on um, Do Not Disturb. So I hope I don't get a call. I always get a call while I'm on live. All right, let me know when to turn it on. I need that panel I was made today. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, press the power button. Okay. Your wish is my command, all right? You guys tell me what to do in this live, all right? I'm going to press the power button now. The power button, as we all know, is right here. I'm going to flick the switch, and you guys can check out the animation. The light turns on. Takes a little bit while. Got this little animation right here. And then, boom. Got that little cool animation right there. And... How you doing, crafty, crafty Puerto Rican? How are you? And then it navigates to your home screen. All right, and there's your home screen right there. All right, I'm going to press right now. It's set up for caps because I had embroidered this hat right here. And I'm going to press a button. Is this a DTF printer? No, it's not a DTF printer. It is an embroidery machine. <laughs> Sometimes I think you guys are playing with me, but it's okay. Um, so I had it set up to do uh, hats. And right now at the top of the screen, it's telling me that I need to oil the machine. But I did that already. And I really don't know what, how to make this machine go away because um, I already oiled it. So if I hit com uh, complete now, I already did this, all this stuff the other day. And I, you, it tells you exactly what to do. Oil the rotary hook, all this, all that, all that, all that, all that. And if you mark it as complete, Mark is complete. Mark is complete. 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 Because I did all of this already. I did all of this already. But what's weird is it seems like there's no, like, enter button to let it know that you did it. Like, there's no, like, enter button. This is the MT-2001 Tennis with the tennis panel. All right. So there's no, like, enter button to tell it, to, like... Look, it's got like the screen, it's got a volume button. You can actually do a screen capture on here. Um, turn the light on and off. That turns that on and off right there. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got common mode. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to cancel that out because I don't even know what that is. But you can turn the Wi-Fi off, turn the Wi-Fi on. But yeah, I marked all that complete, and I'm gonna, just going to go home, and that goes away. But if I, I think if I turn it off and back on again, it's going to come back. All right, so let me... Um, all right, you guys tell me what button you want me to press next. What about the X at the top? I don't... I didn't well, it's gone now. It's gone. That X at the top, that just, you know, X just closes out a menu, I think. But um, all right, so I'm going to navigate around a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you guys, uh, right here is for this specific design that we have loaded up. 
zero out of 5,028 stitches. That's a stitch count. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, progress. That tells you both how much time you have left at the bottom and what percentage out of 100% of this design that it's at. So it'll start from zero and count up. And your total time for the image will be counting up as well. I mean, I think it'll be counting down actually. Then right here, it has what hoop you have selected and the size of that hoop. Right here, it'll tell you whether you want an automatic, automatic, or automatic manual and all that stuff. All right, I think, oh no, I don't, I don't know. It's not doing it right now. All right, and then you have needle, needle number four. That's what the needle machine is on right now. Um, if I want to put on needle number one, I just press the needle button. And then you see it's number one, number four. I press and it moves over just like that. All right. Oh, no, in the oil, the oil part. Um, yeah, I don't know where the oil part, I can't get back to it because I, I did it. I'm interested, if I turn the machine off again and turn it back on, will that, machine, will that message come back up? Let me see. Let me see, let me see if that message comes back up. Because I did it before and it went away for a while and then it came back, um, but that animation is pretty cool. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. That animation is pretty darn cool. They did a good job on this. Um, and I'm one, to be honest with you, while I was, while I was uh, demoing the machine, I'm the one that told them, instead of saying Android, it should say Rakoma. And they corrected that because it did say Android. And now you guys see it doesn't say Android anymore. I told them it should say Rakoma, it shouldn't say Android. They, they fixed that. All right, but anyway, all right. So the mach the, the, it didn't come back, it didn't come back. Uh, Wi-Fi settings, if you press, I press that Wi-Fi button for those of you. Um, that Wi-Fi button, it goes into Wi-Fi settings and you can see all the nearby networks and stuff. I have not yet tried to send a design to the um, machine via Wi-Fi, but I can tell you that it does get updates wirelessly and that is dope. I like that. They send the updates in there and it'll update wirelessly, which is, which is pretty cool. All right, so um, let's 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 go to select design. Um, is needle breaks is needle breaks because of skill or is it just hard surfaces? Needle breaks is because. All right, let me um, address this question real fast. So as you guys know, let me turn on the light. As you guys know, I did make a video embroidering on a Timberland boot, and Mikey T's, you saw the video that I made embroidering on a Timberland boot. So this is what causes a needle break. If a needle can, on the machine can pass through a Timberland boot, and I also made a video embroidering through a leather belt, and I went over this in a video before, if, it, if a needle can pass through a Timberland boot and through a leather belt, then no garment that you are embroidering, including the stiffest of the stiffest hats, will be able to break a needle break. We'll be able to break a needle. Now, you know what will break a needle? If the needle goes down and does not go through that little tiny hole. Now, this is a fairly new machine, so you don't really see any scuff marks or anything around that uh, needle right there. You see maybe one where it hit the side right there. That will cause a needle break. All right, but if I look at my older machines, like if I power this one on, this is my two head right here. Let me zoom back out. Mikey T's, you messing up my live, man. That's not what I want to do. If my older machine, if you zoom in right there, you'll see all types of scuff marks around there. The only way a needle can break is if a needle goes and hits something that it can't pass through. And what causes that? When the needle is uh, pulled to either side. All right, that's the only thing. The thread can pull a needle, the garment can pull a needle, and that's the only thing that causes the needle break. All right, so, all right, cool. So, all right, boom. All right, so let's go to select a design. And guys, I got 18 of you guys in the chat just, um, Give this video a thumbs up so it can be spread out to more people so they can see this interesting stuff that we're doing right here. All right, so I'm gonna go to, matter of fact, before I go to select design, look at this design right here, right? One thing that I really, really, really like, that plate is so cheap, but shipping kills you. Yeah, yeah, it is cheap, and you don't really need to order a new one, you just need to lower the foot to make sure that the foot goes down, holds the item in place, 
so that the garment, the distance between the foot and the garment will cause the needle to go like this and it will hit the side of the plate. And that's why I got the video to three things Wakoma doesn't tell you. I'll show you how to load a foot in that video. Anyhow, okay, cool. keep on getting sidetracked. One thing I really, really love about this panel is the fact that if you change the color of your design, it changes in real time. That's a feature that's not available on any of the other panels, right? Of course, it's not available on that one. And of course, it's not available on that one, the 8S, that's a cool panel too, but it doesn't do anything, anything near like this. Okay, so let's 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 try to like show you just show you that. So I go to select color. All right, there is my design right there. It's flashing because it's on four, right? Four, uh, of course, that corresponds to the blue up here, and you can change all that stuff, match color thread and all that stuff. You can change all that. So let me change it to instead of number one being Blue, let me change it to red. See how that updated in real time? Crazy. Let me change it to go back to one. And let me change it to black. Crazy. So I really love that feature. I really love that feature a lot. Change it to another color gray. Changes in real time. I love that feature so much. That's like the first thing I noticed about it and loved about it. All right, so yeah, your, your stuff changes in real time and you can see an accurate representation of exactly what your embroidery image is going to look like. And I don't, I'm not sure if any other image has that. I'm not, I mean, any other um, machine has that where you can, I, I don't know, I don't know, but yeah. Okay, so match thread color, let's press that button and see what happens. All right, so now this is where you go in and you match the thread color to what you got up top. So I can press that. And um, next, and you can pick the color, whatever color you want to change it to, or whatever, yeah, whatever color you want to change it to, and you just select that color right there, and um, it'll change whatever number that you're on to that specific color. I'm just changing stuff around, I don't, okay. Um, swap needles, don't really know what that is or what that does. Um, yeah, I don't know what swap needle is, but yeah, that's available too, swap needle. <laughs> All right, you got a lot of cool stuff. I changed the color, I don't know what color I changed. I think this was, I don't know. Anyway, I'll fix this later. All right, obviously automatic. Um, you can go to automatic manual and you can go to full manual. Automatic manual, I think automatic manual is like, It'll start embroidering the first color, then when it gets the second color, it'll stop. And then you got to tell it what to do. And then manual is like, it's just going to stop all the time. I, I'm not sure. Manual is going to stop all the time, I think. You guys can, in the chat, you guys can tell me because you guys probably know. All right. Uh, you got some settings down here. And guys, what's crazy is this is only one part of the menu. It's so much stuff in here, right? It's really save changes. No, don't want to save changes. Good. All right. So can you press any of these? No, you can't press any of those. Okay, so now you can go, of course you got your functions right here, like your needle to switch between the needles, like I showed you before. You got your uh, 180 button and stuff like that. It's supposed to say 180, I don't know, anyway. But um, you got your uh, reset, 100 button. Um, you got your cut, in case you need to cut a thread, you press that button and it goes down. If I press that button right now, hold your. All right, cut the thread. So, and another thing, when you press the buttons, it's kind of like you got to hold your finger on the button. It's different. You don't just press it, right? You press it, and there's like a memory. It's like a bar that goes across, right? And that, like, you guys saw that? In the chat, type yes if you saw that. It's a bar. Yeah, you see that. It's a bar that goes across to, like, register. All right, now you can um, move fast or slow, just like before, that's slow. And if you press the middle part, that makes it go fast. Change your stitches per minute right here. All right, boom, boom. I normally run this at like about 800 for everything. All right, then you got your help center, which is a bunch of um, options and stuff. Like it's almost like an instruction guide inside, built inside the machine. Prepare your machine for thread, thread sequence, how to replace a spool, 
adjust to do. They got a lot of stuff packed into this touch panel. And the great part about it is they can add more stuff on the fly because it's built into Wi-Fi. If, you, if you're connected to your Wi-Fi network, they can just send stuff and upgrade this panel right here on the fly. I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. So uh, what else? Um, setup mode, obviously that's if you want to lock your design and start embroidering. Then you got settings, bro. Settings, so many functions in that menu. Watch this, settings, look at this. You got embroidery parameters, user actions, admin, Ma machine manage, uh, machine parameters, machine test, and production report. All right, so a bunch of different, and each of these different menus has a bunch of other stuff in here. Like, look, you got thread break, trimming, needles, and all of them has options. Like, each of these settings has a whole set of other menus in them. Look, software update. You can update that. It'll tell you, please insert USB. Okay, so, so... Correction. They can send updates to it, but as of right now, I think when I got my last update, they sent it to me. I don't remember putting a USB. I'm not sure. I forget. Help center operation fail. Okay. So anyway, I, yeah, I stand corrected. I think you got to put a USB in there to update it. They send you the update, put it on the, but it does have the capability of getting it via Wi-Fi. I know that for sure. I guess they're still working stuff out. Export log, system info, all that stuff on there. All right, so let's go back to the um, main page and let's see some cool stuff, all right? And by the way, as you guys are coming in, hit that like button, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. I want to give you guys some in-depth behind-the-scenes stuff. Okay, so let's go to select design and let's see what that menu looks like. Now look at this. You have an accurate representation of all the designs on your machine. You can scroll through with your finger if you want to, which is pretty cool, right? Another thing that you can do is you can search for a design. So if I press that right there, and then I tap that right there, it brings up a keyboard, and I can tap, type in um, what, a dub. Okay, I don't got no design called a dub on there. Um, uh, Mason. Okay, okay, well, anyway, you guys get the idea. You can search for stuff. You could type it in. If you got a whole bunch of stuff on there, a whole bunch of designs on your machine, you can go ahead and type something in. You can also switch to USB. If I had a USB inserted, it would flip, flip to USB, and it would show you all the files that's on that USB stick. Um, library, um, I don't know, text. Uh, I think, it, yeah, it has some built-in text that you could use, so... Um, if you want to do like a, a shirt or something, like just a, a name on a backpack or something, you can type it in here. Alan. I never tried this yet. I'm, this is all on the fly, guys. And generate. And if you wanted to change the font, you can just go right here and pick from something that they got inside the machine. Uh, not too many. I mean, but that's a nice fair amount. Let's look. Oh, you know what? That is a nice fair amount. Let me scroll through. Okay, so that's one. We got 25 fonts to choose from. It's not, it's not too bad. It's not great, but it's not too bad. And you can adjust the fonts right here. All right, you can pick how big you want it to be. You know, you can, I'm sure you could type it in. Yeah, 50. Okay, that's going to make the font bigger. Um, done. You can, the distance, um, character spacing between each character. Um, angle, you can angle the font, you can, com uh, compens that's pull compensation, I'm thinking, and margins. So a lot of stuff in there. Uh, you can have favorite designs if you want to. And what else is dope is, you see this folder called Alberto? You can make folders. So say if you got a client, right? Say if you got a client and that client has like 10 designs, you can um, make a folder. Why don't we make a folder? New folder. And let's call this folder... Um, football. Okay. Now you see we got the football folder. So what we can do, let's find a football design. All right. Football design right here. Boom. Move to folder. Move to folder. 
pick the folder you want it to move to, boom, save. Now that just went to our football folder. So you can organize stuff. I like that a lot. I know it's, it, it doesn't mean anything, but I, for those people who have multi-needle embroidery machines, a lot of the times when you put a bunch of files on there, you're like scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and trying to find a design. And when you got a lot of designs on your machine, which this one doesn't have too many designs on the machine, but when you, because it was a tester, obviously. But um, when you have a lot of, like my other machine, this one has a, a crap ton of designs, my EM1010, crap ton of designs on that. Um, crap to a whole lot of designs on the uh, MT1501. Uh, I think all these designs is on here is on there and on here also. But um, yeah, let me turn this back off. All right, but um, yeah. So yeah, USB machine. Let's go back to home. All right, and let me see what you guys are saying in the comment. Okay, you guys are just checking it out. Okay, cool. So okay, you can select the hoops, select the hoop size or whatever, and also don't forget. Inside of your hoops, you can change the parameters right here. You can edit. You can edit the hoop size. So it's they make it real easy to do stuff, right? Edit. So now I can go in and I can change all the hoop parameters right here. Everything is, like, really, really intuitive. And they tried to make it almost like this right here is the iPhone of touch panels. They make it real user-friendly and real easy to understand what's going on as opposed to this definitely, and, and this is a little easier to use than that one, but not nearly as easy to use as this. I'm going to be honest with you guys. All right. I'm not trying to sell you guys to um, update to, you know, get the machine with the updated panel because I'm going to be 100% <laughs> honest with you guys. Uh, there's nothing that I can't do on this machine that I can't do on this machine. So if you want to save money, just get this machine. If you want the fancy touch panel, go ahead and get this machine. But there's nothing that I can't do. This machine is not going to make you magically embroider, embroider better, okay? It's just a fancy screen, all right? So this is not me um, trying to talk you and convince you into getting this one with this machine. This is me showing you guys something cool, right? That, that's just that's it. I'm just making some content showing you guys something cool, all right? So, um, yeah. So, boom. Boom. Uh, Custom, yeah, you can put your custom hoops in there. I totally forgot about that. I wish some way, some way you can move that to the edit. I wish some way you can move that, because that's my mighty hoop and that's my sleeve hoop. I wish some way you can move this to this screen right here. But then again, you can, I think you can, can you rename these? Edit. Yeah, you can rename it. Yeah, so you can, I can, I can change it. So there's no need to move that hoop to there because you can rename it. So that's interesting, but can you add more hoops to this section? It doesn't look like you can, all right? So this is just what it comes with. And then if you want to add more hoops, you just go to custom when it, and then you can add hoops to this custom area. That's pretty cool. So they got, they got a lot of stuff in, in the hoop selection area. Um, all right, so that's really useful right there. Um, what else we got? Select color. Obviously, this is select color from your design. Showed you that menu. We were in that menu already. And design set. Design settings. Now, this is where you want to go if you want to flip your design, if you want to rotate your design or anything like that, if you want to duplicate your design. So if I want to like put another one right here, I go duplicate copies horizontal or copies, no, copies vertical or copies horizontal. You just tap there, press 2, press OK. Nothing is going to appear until you change the distance. All right, change the distance. So I'm going to go boom, and I'm going to go two inches, and now they're two inches side by side. That's so easy, bro, so easy. So if you, like, are doing a bunch of patches or something like that, really, really easy. If you want to flip it, all right, you can flip it vertical, flip it horizontal. But really, you, I use the rotate button. And I just rotate it 180 degrees, and that's going to change it to the right side up. But this is the hat hoop right here, the hat frame, so you want to keep it right there because when you put the hat on a frame, you put the hat with the bill that way, so you want it to be facing that way. All right, so um, let's go back. And it's not going to save until you hit save right there, so that's cool too, so you can't really mess that up. Go back. 
look, it saved it. It saved it because I didn't, I didn't hit like cancel or anything. Anyway, let me go back to the, sorry, let me fix that guys. Uh, duplicate one. Okay. Okay. And then if I go here, see, I had pressed. Okay. Are you sure you want to save the design? I should have hit cancel, but I hit okay. I'm going to hit okay again because I want to save it. Okay. So now let's go back there. And, um, what else? What else, guys? I, th I mean, that's that's pretty much it as far as the uh, settings, as far as the uh, machine is concerned. You see the stitches per minute right here. Um, it's not too much, but it is a lot. All right. So if I go back into settings, you see there's a whole lot of different parameters you can change. A whole lot. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff because, you know, you can change the limit of your machine. You can change the uh, movement speed out of bounds. I have no idea what that means. Frame moving angle, no idea what that means. Hook angle, look, it's a whole trim. It's a whole bunch of machine configuration. St oh, wait, am I even supposed to show that? It's like a serial number and stuff. I, I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, guys, it's a whole lot of stuff on this machine, um, on this touch panel. And I think they did a good job. I just wanted to show you guys uh, inside. How do you switch out my old screen for this screen? You can't. You can't switch out your old screen for this screen because it is literally impossible. You, you can't do that. All right. So say, for example, if you had this, right, and you would think that it's just a, yeah, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. They don't, they don't have a way to let you do it. That's not even an option that Rakoma does. So your only option, if you want the new screen, is to get the new machine. You can't upgrade your screen, unfortunately. And it does have two USB inserts on the side right there. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to make a video and show you guys um, the screen. Oh, and uh, you know, once your design is loaded and everything, right? Once your design is loaded, Here's all the stuff you can trace. You can schedule a frame out. You can go back to the origin point. You can go back to the stop point. You can float. All the, all the, all the regular stuff that you have on your standard machine, everything is on there. Everything is on there. Deciding factor for me, um, nothing is a deciding factor for me because I focus on making money. So like, if I had to, if I had to choose between this machine and this machine, right? Single head and price was not an option. I mean, I would obviously go with the newer machine because, you know, it doesn't matter because price is not a thing. But if price is a thing, I'm going with the, I'm going with the, this machine. I'm going with this machine because you can save a couple thousand dollars even though it has an older, you know, this is a 20 needle with the new screen. Um... It's a 15 needle with the old screen. I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, this is, I don't know. That's, that's a tough choice. That's a tough choice. But if I had to add a machine for full price to my arsenal for my business, I would just, I would just do this. I would just do this, to be honest with you. But having all these features as far as the color changing and stuff like that, it is very, very appealing to me. I'm not even going to lie. And the machine, it does seem, to be honest, it does seem like they did some fine tuning because it does run different than that. It even sounds different when it's embroidering. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and like just say, you know, I'll just go with this. It does sound different. It sounds, which is a weird thing to say, it has a different sound than the other machine. It does sound like it's running smoother. It does sound like they might have tuned some things up a little bit. I really don't know. I can't um, tell you guys that for sure. But even when it moves from side to side, it sounds different. It sounds more like a computer, right? So there's probably a bunch of stuff that they did in the internals and stuff like that. Maybe some new bushings. I have no idea, but it does seem like this machine runs smoother and, I don't know, more updated than this one. 
But when I'm embroidering stuff, I can I can get the same amount of money for, for the just whether the design came from here or from there. So if your business wants to save money, if you want to save money, if you're on a budget, it's perfect. Or you can go with the 8S panel. Um, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't even go with the 8S panel because you might as well get the 10S panel if that's the point, right? Because because from this to that, I'd rather just have this because this to me is a pretend this, right? So you can go from that to that, just skip over that altogether because there was nothing really wonderful about that, to be honest. There was nothing wonderful about it. It, it was honestly, this, this 8S panel was a disappointment to me. It was a disappointment to me. It didn't, it wasn't, you know, this 8S panel was what this is, what was, this is what it was supposed to be. All right, if that makes sense. All right, so um, that's pretty much it, guys. I think, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> Ramon's review says his, his, his chores are calling him. I have my machine for like three months, but haven't used it more than twice to try. I'd love for someone to come to my shop and do it hands-on because I am lost and intimidated stuff. So, oh man yeah uh, uh you welcome to watch a bunch of my videos and you know i'm pretty much go through all this stuff and show you how to use the machine pretty much but um you can also get do i hope you did the live training with Wacoma. they set you up pretty well um but as far as coming out to somebody's establishment i really don't have time because I'm doing too much stuff over here. I'm making videos on YouTube and I'm filling orders. I just filled a bunch of orders right now before I jump on this live. Um, I actually had a slow start today. I stayed in the house and slept sometimes. And that's a good thing about being an entrepreneur. Sometimes um, you can just take it easy for the day and have a late start if you want to. And that's 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 what I did today. I just laid in bed. Um, I think I got up out of bed at maybe like 11. No, maybe like 10 or 11. And then I took my time, I watched some TV, I took a shower, I got something to eat, I went to the gym, came back from the gym, took another shower, folded clothes, washed dishes, ate something, and then I got a phone call because somebody was at the studio 40 minutes away to pick up some sweatshirts that they, that they paid for. So yeah, then I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to take a shower, I'm going to leave out in a little while. And then I took my sweet time even more, and they waited for me, <laughs> which was crazy. Yeah, they waited for me. They wanted those sweatshirts. So anyway, but guys, um, can't you run it faster than the older machines? Yeah, you can. It's, um, but to be honest, I don't have a problem with running my, my old machine fast. I run my MT-1501 with the regular panel at 1,000 stitches per minute all the time, especially when it's large designs. I do more applique now. To try to cover to try to get designs done faster but um if it's a large design with a lot of switch stitches running your machine faster is all about having your your knobs turn correctly having your tension set correctly and then you can run any machine i even ran this i got videos where i'm running the em 1010 at a thousand stitches per minute so and my normal speed for the em 1010 is 800 stitches per minute so it's all about you, you know, and, and you knowing how to control your tension and stuff like that. And then you can run any one of the machines um, fast, you know. So if you hear people in the groups that say, yeah, I only run my machine at 600 stitches per minute. I mean, they might have their reasons for it. I can't sit here and tell you, you know, why, why not or why to. Everybody has their reasoning. But and maybe when you run your machine slower, maybe the, you know, there's more, there's less bouncing around which means your design could possibly embroider neater maybe i don't know but i run my machines fast and my designs come out fast, fine and nobody complains no customer complains about anything right you have to shake the fear off you won't you definitely won't break the machine the machine will definitely break you or pass through your finger or something like that so yeah you won't break the machine at all yeah um the crafty puerto rican is exactly right getting to where uh, more when you run fast. Um, T-Town T-shirts, you're probably right. You're probably right. That would make sense. You you put more mileage on your car if you run it faster. You run... Yeah, that makes sense. You, if you run your machine faster all the time, you probably wear it out faster. But, yeah, these machines are... These machines ain't dying no time soon. They, like... 
they run. As long as you oil it and stuff like that, and they run. They're like tanks. They're they're uh, meant to pump out volume and, and run all day and all night. I ran these machines like last year. I ran these things like these four, these five machines right here. All last winter, never stopped running, um, cause I was making uh, eagles. I was making uh, it's a Philly thing hoodies, and pff, I couldn't make them fast enough. As a matter of fact, I got so many orders that um, when I did my last run or what what I thought was my last run, cause I was tired of making them. Um, I kept on getting calls and kept on getting inquiries, and I'm like, yo, this is like too much money to leave on the table. So I actually drove to Alpha Broder. Um, I'm in Philly. I drove to Alpha Broder like two hours, two and a half hours away. It's, I think it's in Harrisburg because I needed to make some shirts that some some stuff that day because I had already took people's money because, you know, when stuff is hot and you, you, you know, you got your business, you just got to keep on going, right? Even when you don't feel like it, you know, how, who am I to say, okay, that's enough money. I'm done for the season. Yo, People were hitting me up like crazy, and I'm like, "Hey, you got an extra large? You got a larger?" And I'm, I'm all out. I'm like, you know what? By the time the third or fourth person called me, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I got, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Put an order in the alpha order. Yeah, pick. I'm, I'm gonna be there to pick it up. Um, drove down first thing in the morning. They opened up, gave my my uh, order number and stuff like that. Showed them my ID. They gave me my boxes. I loaded up in my truck. Go drove straight here and, and went to work and stayed all night. Make it, listen. Sometimes if you got you got to do it, you got to make it happen. You know. Do you know if you can embroider on crochet items, a crochet stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've embroidered on a crochet. Uh, some of you guys might have saw that video. I embroidered on a crochet sweater. Um, it was a big design too. I embroidered a big design on the back of a crochet sweater. It came out fine. I'm trying to think that I do a knockdown stitch on that design. I don't believe I did. I think the tatami stitch or the fill stitch of that design was the knockdown stitch. I don't think I did anything special. No, I didn't do a knockdown stitch. But I would advise you, like, so crochet is kind of like a knit. So if you are embroidering text, like some, like a name on a crochet sweater or something like that, depending on how thick the crochet is, I would do a knockdown stitch in the background and then embroider the name on a knockdown stitch. And make sure the thread that you're using for the knockdown stitch is the same color as a sweater. So it is just later later fabric down flat and stabilize that area of the fabric. And it'll you could just put a name on there or something like that. And that'll make your thing look neat. So all right, guys. So uh that's all I wanted to show you guys. So I just wanted to show you guys in depth the touch panel. Um this is still a loaner machine, it does not belong to me. Um, I think that they gave me the option to buy it, but I think I'm going to um, send it back because it's not the best thing for uh, my business's finances. I want to allocate my business's finances to do something different right now. So I think I'm going to I think I'm going to have them take it back. Um, yeah. So I just want to, you know, show it, show you guys this panel and what it was all about before they came and picked it up. And I don't know when exactly they're going to come pick it up, but it's going to be gone soon unless I change my mind. <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much for watching. Everybody have a good night. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next video, man. All right? Later. Have a good night, guys. See you guys tomorrow. We'll do another video tomorrow. Send back the panel. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not that I don't like it. I like it a lot. But, but, um, I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it right now. Like, like if I needed it right now, my machines would be running. But I'm, I, I'll tell you what, I will need it soon because I'm making some moves right now and I will need it soon. But when I do need it, I'll just get another machine, right? I mean, it's not difficult at all. You just get another machine when you need it and add it to your business. So, Right now, I'm planning some other stuff. I want to allocate some funds to different things. So, um, yeah. Talk to you guys later. All right, T-Town, T-shirts. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Peace.